Hi, everybody. This is Crypto Rich. Welcome with you to Get Rich with Crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profit. Now, I have been running, I've been posting channels on videos on YouTube since April 2017, mostly about cryptocurrencies, occasionally about gold and silver. And in this video, we're going to be talking to someone about the value of silver and why silver. I invested £25,000. Today, that investment is worth £5 million. Say hello to our hero, the Hydrogen Energy Release Optimizer. It's powered by hydrogen, the most abundant element in the world. Hydrogen and oxygen are fed into the hero system, where they interact with a secret catalyst to generate heat. This permanent source of heat is flameless and completely safe. Limitless power, zero emissions. NordVPN is becoming more than just a VPN. Threat protection will guard your device against malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads, even if you're not connected to a VPN server at the time. Step up your cybersecurity and stay safe. Now, before I introduce him, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, CryptoRichYT, join my official Telegram announcements channel. And if you're watching this on YouTube, come on, come on, come on, come and follow and subscribe to me on Odyssey, bit.ly slash CryptoRichOdyssey, because I post loads of videos on Odyssey, the like of which YouTube doesn't appreciate because of their censorious attitude. Hey, Alex, thank you so much for making yourself available. Hi, Rich. Uh, you're very welcome. It's nice to be here. Yes, thank you. And this is our, the third video we've recorded together so far. We did yeah. one about why I think you should home educate. Yes. Uh, I'll link to that in the description below and people can go and find out about that. And then the other one is was about starscientific.com.au, which is yep. an Australian regu fully regulated private ownership company, which is launching an incredibly, um, let me say, effective, efficient and new form of energy production from hydrogen and they've already got a contract with to install the retrofit it with it with philippines the filipino government and also with the mars food group in australia plus some other contracts that are building and developing and um we did a long video about that where we talk about it in depth where people can go and find out about how they can invest in this project should they wish to do amazing project amazing project well you would say that right and actually from what you told me i agree with you link in the description below and you can email Alex and he'll give you more information as an investor himself. Mm -hmm. But this one is about silver because in that video, you said that you thought that silver was a really great investment. Now I, I agree with you, right? But I thought it might be interesting to find out uh, what your reasons are. And there may be some reasons that you have that I don't have that I could learn from you and, and also vice versa that I could provide something to you about silver. Apart from the fact it's just beautiful. It's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. Well, um, I suppose the number one reason is that um, in times of uh, funny money yeah. um, and in times of financial turmoil, it's got a 5,000 year track record. Um, gold as well, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, I like the example that's often bandied around of in Roman times, uh, one ounce of gold would buy you the finest Roman toga. Today, one ounce of gold will buy you the finest suit on Savile Row. So that ounce of gold has kept its purchasing power over thousands of years um, compared to um, I live in the UK. So UK sterling has lost 97 percent of its purchasing power in the last 40 years alone. Um, in fact, I, I heard that stat two or three years ago. I wouldn't be surprised if it's, uh, you know, if it's greatly more than that, given the amount of funny money they've been printing the last few years. So number one, it's got thousands of years of track record of uh, you know, holding its purchasing power. Um, but actually, 95% uh, of the silver that's ever been taken out of the ground um, has been used up in industrial processes um, versus 95% of the gold that's been taken out of the ground is still you know, in use. It's either in a vault or as jewelry. Um, so uh, traditionally, again, the long-term uh, ratio, the gold-silver ratio of the value between gold and silver um, over the last same 5,000 years has been 12 to 1, um, mostly because of the reflecting the, uh, the, the rarity of gold over silver. Um, that's actually, uh, you know, everything works in a pendulum, but it's been as high as uh, 120 to 1. I think at the moment it's about 
60, 70, 80 to one. I haven't checked recently. Um, so it's still out of whack in favor of gold uh, to its long term average. That's got to swing back at some point. You know, I've heard experts say that they see silver uh, reaching parity with gold at some point. Um, well, you know, if that happens, then silver's got to be uh, a good investment uh, uh, versus gold. Um, and, and we'll know that gold and silver um, are, you know, great, great long term holders of, uh, of value. So, um, so the fact that it's so rare, um, you know, uh, the price isn't um, isn't reflective of that. And believe what you like about whether the market is, um, uh, you know, suppressed and and the price is manipulated. Um, but uh, yeah, long term, uh, it holds its value uh, versus every fiat currency on the planet, of which there have been thousands uh, over the last, you know. Uh, again, same period of time, um, which have a 100% failure rate. They've all gone to zero. Yes, every single fiat currency has gone to zero. Now, you said something you believe about whether people believe the whether the silver and, you didn't say the gold price, but whether the silver and gold price are manipulated. They are! They are! <laughs> they are manipulated, right? Okay, I didn't, I didn't want to say that overly. But you can say I'll that. Be, it's I'll manipulated, right? So how is it manipulated and why is it manipulated? Um, I'm not going to say that I know enough about that. My sources tell me that Morgan Stanley um, have uh, have cornered the silver market um, and manipulate the hell out of it. Um, so they're, they're 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 selling paper silver like it's going out of uh, you know uh, of, of existence, um, and that there's something like twenty times more paper silver in existence than there is actual physical silver. So at some point, if you've invested in a silver ETF or a silver fund or something, other than actually having physical silver in your vault um, or in your safe, then at some point there's going to be, you're going to try and sell that and there's going to be a call on that uh, on that silver. And just like a game of um, musical chairs, 20 people are going to all be trying to claim uh, on that one ounce of silver um, and only one person is going to find out that they actually own it. And that's the person who has it sitting in their vault. The other 19 who have a bit of paper saying they own it are going to find out that actually the paper value of that silver is zero. Yes, yes. Nobody wants paper silver. Just like It's a bit like what happened with FTX, because in the background they were, they were printing paper Bitcoin, mm. trading paper Bitcoin within their closed system to make it look, you know, and then creaming off the profits. And my understanding of it, why it's done and for people who don't know is that so whether or not people agree whether you whether or not you actually think gold and silver are money the market considers that they are money mm -hmm. because just Absolutely. like the euro and the dollar and the pound and the yen are traded on the foreign exchanges as currencies so are gold and silver and gold is traded against the dollar that's the biggest market in for gold and silver is traded against the dollar and in a world where the dollar supply is being increased, 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 if it was a completely unmanipulated system, and people can see, okay, well, they're increasing the supply of the dollar, which means as you increase the supply of something, the value of it goes down because it loses oh. scarcity value. So the purchasing uh -huh. power of the dollar or the pound or the euro or the yen goes down because it's, the supply is being increased. Well, uh -huh. then people go to something like gold, like silver, well, you can't increase the supply. Not of the. You can't really increase the physical supply because the physical supply comes on. It's dependent upon how much is available and can be dug out of the ground that are, at a um, in a way that's cost effective. Uh -huh. So then the risk is that the value of gold goes up against the dollar. So the gold goes up, the dollar goes down, and everybody in the world is like, oh my god, oh my god, the dollar's crashing. They move into gold or silver, and the dollar goes down even further. Bye bye petrodollar. Bye bye American imperial hegemony. Hello, gold and silver and real money. And in order to prevent that from happening, the shareholders of the Federal Reserve, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, uh, I think one, a couple of others, or what, I can't remember their names, they own or they have stakes or investments in the LBMA, the London Bullion Market, and the COMEX in New York, which determine the international prices for gold and silver on the currency markets. So they will say, okay, let's just press a button here 
do and print some digital silver and some digital gold to increase the supply and make it look like there's more gold and silver than there is in order to make the dollar look strong. And if you look at the charts of dollar against gold and silver, you can see where it crashes all of a sudden. Where oh. some billions of dollars of gold and silver are traded in a nanosecond. The other reason I like silver is that um, in times of incredible uncertainty, um, let's say that uh, you know, there's blood on the streets and CBDCs are in, um, they banned cash. Um, you know, what, what are you going to use? Um, if you've got a silver, uh, an ounce of silver, or even a little, a little silver nugget, um, some, some jewelry, then you've got something that you can trade with that someone will recognize. Like I say, it's got thousands of years of track record. Yeah. Um, like you said, the, the, the market sees it as that, as money, whether people see it as money or not. So you can trade that. Now, gold, um, if you're, if you're traveling, you can take a lot of value um, in, a, in a very small amount. But silver um, is, is very, uh, you know, the, the value right now, at least, you know, you could, it's, a, it's small amounts, like one ounce of silver, you can buy in the, in the UK for £35. Um, I don't believe that would be the case um, for, for too much longer. Um, I like to um, uh, compare house prices with silver. People think, oh, house prices are going up. They always go up. Um, but if you if you look at house prices versus the number of ounces of silver that it takes to buy the average price house, um, in 1980 it was as low as 1,000 ounces of silver. Um, 2004 it was um, just shy of 50,000 ounces uh, of silver to buy that same median price house. Um, and today I think it's come down to about 15,000. What does that tell you? In 2004, if you'd sold your house. Um, and put that money into silver, you'd have had 50,000 ounces of silver, which would today be enough to buy three houses back. Right. Um, right. Where, I, where I believe that's going is back to where it was in 1980, which is 1,000 ounces of silver, and, and probably lower, okay. maybe four, four or 500. Yeah. I'm not suggesting you sell your house today and buy back 15 houses in a couple of years' time. <laughs> well, it may or may not happen. That's the other thing, right? Because, um, you know, what, what, what I can definitely, definitely say about Bitcoin and about gold and also about star, shares in Star Scientific and about gold and silver and everything, right, is the price will either go up or it will go down, except when it moves sideways. That, 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 that is true in all conditions, right? However, in, a, in an environment where in the background fiat currencies like the dollar and the pound are being printed away out of existence, losing value. And uh, gold and silver can do what they've always done, which is as a as a medium of exchange, real sound money, and also as um, as a hedge. They store value. Now, the the other thing that you, that I want to go back to is you said ninety five percent of silver is used up. Now I know, and I think you know as well, right? That after oil, silver is the most used industrial commodity. Mm. And just like when oil is converted to plastic or converted to fertilizer, that gallon of oil is gone. You can't recover that gallon of oil. Gold just stays. No one's going to no one's going to convert gold to anything. It doesn't have many industrial uses because it doesn't react with anything. It's not very comfortable to sleep on. It's not very comfortable to sleep on. That's right. You can't eat it. And it, and it, and you carry too many in your pockets. It'll rip a hole in your trouser pockets, right? But silver gets used. So how is silver used? Um, well, it gets used in batteries, it gets used in computers. Um, I, I don't know the full range of uses, but I know they're, they're large. Um, okay, well, let, let me add a few then for people to know, right? It's used in the food industry. It's used in virtually all electrical components and machinery. So uh, my, this computer that I'm recording on, the mobile phone, all touchscreens, TVs, and all sorts of electronic uses. It is the most electrically conductive metal there is. It conducts much better than copper or anything else going. It's used in solar panels. It's used in hybrid electric cars. It's used in medicine. It's it's used in mirrors. It's used in mirrors, right? So, and maybe you can recover it from a mirror, although that would take energy and would probably require silver at some point to be used up. But it's used all over the place. You know, I couldn't go through all the uses that oil has. Similarly, I can't go through all the uses that silver has but boy, are they a lot. So we have this background of money being printed. 
Uh, silver, the supply of new supply of silver is fairly steady of physical silver. And the physical silver is being consumed at 95% of the new supply that's coming online. And by the way, the paper supply is not being consumed. You can't use paper or digital silver in to build a computer or in your smartphone or anything. It has to be physical. And the from what I understand is the physical stocks of silver that are being held in various repositories are diminishing. Diminishing, 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 diminishing because it's being used up. Because the price is being suppressed, uh, being uh, lowered artificially, um, it's not economically viable to mine the silver that's in the ground. Um, if the price went up, then it would be sufficiently worthwhile to put the resources into digging that up. But at the moment, it's not. Which means that above ground silver is a bargain because the price is being suppressed mm -hmm. and rare because it's not yeah. being replaced so quickly. And the other factor is the energy costs. So as energy costs go up, it becomes more and more uneconomical to dig physical silver or physical gold at these prices. So mm -hmm. that at some point, the paper, the paper price of silver is going to depeg from physical mm -hmm. and the market's going to break. And yep. physical silver, I think, will go through the roof. <clears throat> silver and gold will always reassert themselves. Yeah, and they always have that. And then where you would, you know, what I find talking to friends and family in the UK is they don't get the value of gold and silver. They don't get the value of gold and silver. And in most of Europe, people don't get the value of gold and silver, apart from what I've heard in Germany and Austria and possibly Hungary because of their experiences during the Second World War and the yeah. run-up to the Second World War. But if you don't think gold and silver have any value, that gold coin or that silver coin, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm sure there's someone in Africa, in South America, in China, in other parts of Asia, in India, in Pakistan, in Japan. They will gladly exchange that silver or gold coin for some worthless fiat. Right. <laughs> Alex, anything else? Actually, what, what sort of silver do you think people should hold? Um, it depends. Um, it depends where you live and what your um, what your motivation is. Um, if you're looking to, um, well, I'll just say for me, I live in the UK. Um, for me, it's uh, uh, it's a it's a hedge. It's an insurance policy as much as an investment. Um, now I know that. Um, so, uh, well, let me say this first of all. In the UK, the the uh, the who is it that mints them? The Royal, the Royal Mint. Mint. Yeah. So the Royal Mint um, makes uh, silver Britannias, which have I think a two pound face value, um, but it's one ounce of silver. So the it's, value of it it's, it's ten pounds. The silver Britannia, beautiful coin. Beautiful. Oh, it's ten pounds is it? It has a face value of ten pounds. Okay. The gold Britannia has a face value of a hundred pounds. So it's actually legal tender. And because it's legal tender, uh, currently in the UK, you don't pay any capital gains tax on silver. Yes. If you if you own it, if you if you own silver Britannias, uh, then you know there's there's no capital gains. If silver reasserts itself into the market and the price shoots up, um, you know there's no saying that they may bring a law in, you know, like a one-off windfall tax. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried it. Um, but at the moment, there's no capital gains tax on silver Britannias, so that's why that's I in like, the UK. There is income the UK. tax. There is income tax on the purchase of silver coins in the uk and you know you really should check out your own jurisdiction in your own jurisdiction what the rules and regulations are but i would recommend that um get silver coins in your national currency so if in the us go buy a silver dollar or a silver eagle um mm -hmm. whatever it might an australian um koala or a chinese panda or whatever it is right in your particular country because it's going to be um, fungible, which means, you know, it's going to be exchangeable. People are going to recognize the value of it. And then also, you know, that it's actual silver, because I think the Britannia is 99.9% 99 .99 fine silver. There's also sterling silver in the UK. Any coin that was minted before 1918. So all the coins that were printed that were part of the British Empire. So if you had an Indian rupee, which was which is dated pre-1918, it's 92.5% silver. And in the US, all coins pre-1965, um, I think are 90% silver. And if anybody knows the exact figures, let me know in the description below. So you can use that. That's junk silver. You can, of course, buy silver nuggets from authorized dealers. Sorry, silver bars, larger denomination coins and stuff. But then they're not as exchangeable, you know, when it comes to should 
central bank CBDCs, central bank digital control systems come into play. And I don't think they if they do, they will last. Um, then silver and gold and, of course, cryptocurrencies, especially private cryptocurrencies, will they come into their own? OK, now. Why silver and gold and not crypto, given that you're on a crypto channel, mate? Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to mine uh, coins, uh, me and another friend. Um, I put him onto it. Uh, he's more technical. Uh, so um, I put in the money. Uh, he bought all the gear and we started mining. And I think it was Litecoin and Feathercoin uh, yeah. that we mined uh, mostly. And uh, anyway, we worked out in the end that it was probably uh, costing more in uh, uh, electricity uh, than we were actually making. So um, so that only lasted for a while. Uh, why not crypto? Um, I don't really have an answer. Um, I don't currently have any crypto in my portfolio. I'm open to it. Um, but I just don't think that it has the same track record. Like if we're talking about gold and silver and the fact that they've got thousands of years, um, I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's a fair point. It's a fair point. It's not something you've necessarily explored because the Litecoin that you mined then, how many years when Feathercoin was around? I remember the Feathercoin in 2014, right? That yeah. while the Feathercoin is virtually worthless now, Litecoin's worth a whole lot more. Yes. It is it doesn't have Litecoin and Bitcoin and Pirate Chain, they don't have the track record that gold and silver has. Mm. Completely get it, right? Um so so you're not saying no, 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 no crypto. I just don't know about it. So then there's value in that, in that people should stick with what they know. And if they don't know something, they should, you know, maybe go ahead and explore. If you don't know about gold and silver, go ahead and explore it. Go watch my videos with David Morgan, whom I hoped, the silver guru, I hope to have on my channel again at some point and uh, take a look. And, you know, also take a look at starscientific.com.au and I'll have the link to Alex's email if you want to find out more about it. And also the video where we talked about it at length. And uh, Alex, thank you so much. It's been great having these conversations with you. It has been. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with silver profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Alex or Silver Alex signing out. All the best. Bye bye.